Hello everyone. In Python, database operations are usually carried out on relational databases using SQL, structured query language. Python has various libraries to interact with database management systems. Among the most popular are libraries for SQLite, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and Microsoft SQL Server. These libraries provide the necessary tools and functions to communicate with database servers. Database operations in Python typically involve these steps. 1. Establishing a database connection. To communicate with a database in Python, you first need to establish a connection. This can vary depending on the type of database you are using. For example, with SQLite, you can connect to a local database file using the SQLite 3 module. 2. Creating a cursor. To execute queries and retrieve data from a database, you need to create a cursor object. The cursor is used to send your queries to the database and receive results. 3. Executing SQL queries. You can execute SQL queries through the cursor. These queries can be for adding, updating, deleting, or retrieving data from the database. 4. Committing database changes. To make the changes you made, like insert, update, delete, permanent in the database, you need to commit these changes. 5. Closing the connection. Once your operations are complete, it's important to close the database connection. This ensures efficient use of resources and prevents potential data leaks. Example, creating a library management system. This code example creates a simple library management system using SQLite in Python. The system offers basic functions to store, query, update, and delete books in a database. SQLite is a lightweight and serverless database management system, making it ideal for small projects and prototypes. In this project, the following steps are performed. 1. Initializing the database connection. Our journey begins with the connect underscore to underscore database function. This crucial step involves establishing a connection to the SQLite database, specifically to a file named library.db. This is where all our library data will be stored and managed. 2. Setting up the database structure. Next, we use the create underscore table function to lay the foundation of our system. It creates a table named books, which acts as a repository for our library inventory. This table is designed to store key details of each book, including its unique ID, title, author, publisher, and the year of publication. These fields are carefully chosen to encapsulate the essential information about the books in our library. 3. Adding books to the database. With our database set up, we introduce the ability to add new books through the add underscore book function. This functionality allows users to input details about new books, which are then stored in the books table. This process is not just about storing data but also about expanding the library's collection in a structured and organized manner. 4. Retrieving and displaying book information. An essential feature of any management system is the ability to view its inventory. The list underscore books function serves this purpose by retrieving and displaying all the books currently in the database. This function showcases how data can be accessed and presented from a database, providing a clear overview of the library's collection. 5. Modifying and maintaining the collection. As any library's collection is dynamic, we need tools to update and remove books. The update underscore book and delete underscore book functions empower users to modify the details of an existing book or remove it from the database entirely. These functions are crucial for maintaining an accurate and up-to-date library inventory. 6. Interacting with the system. All these functionalities are wrapped within a user-friendly command line interface, provided by the menu function. This interface serves as the main point of interaction between the user and the database, allowing for operations like adding, listing, updating, and deleting books. It's designed to be intuitive and straightforward, ensuring that users can easily manage the library without needing in-depth technical knowledge. This code is a basic example of performing database operations in Python and is a suitable entry point for beginners due to the simplicity of SQLite. For the source code of this project and more information, you can follow the link below. Engaging with the community. Feel free to reach out to me on my social media channels for any queries or discussions related to Python and databases. Also, your support on platforms like Buy Me a Coffee and Patreon is greatly appreciated and helps me create more content like this. Remember, handling errors efficiently while executing SQL queries enhances the reliability and stability of your application. In summary, Python offers powerful and flexible tools for interacting with various database management systems, essential for modern application development and data management.